Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Junkin 101 with Cassie. I'm Cassie. So as you can see, we have our Christmas journal back out. This is episode two of four. Um, I wanted to go over just a couple of things before we start today. So in the first video, we did the cover, and yes, the cover looks a little bit different if you've seen that video. Um, I decided to go ahead and redo my cover because I didn't like that the snaps were crooked on my first cover and I didn't like the messed up stitching around the outside of it. That's all just personal preference on my end. So, like I said in the last video, today we're going to work on getting the signature in there and possibly working on some of the ephemera. I did take my kit and I already cut out a majority of the ephemera pieces some of them that I don't think I'm going to use I didn't cut out and then I have some odd and Christmas ephemera stuff here that I thought maybe we might use to decorate some of it up so as you can see on my cover here instead of doing the two buttons I went ahead and did three buttons I think it just holds it a little bit more securely and I went ahead and I put my pages back to back and I sewed around them using just a regular straight stitch and um, so there were there ended up being one two three four five pages of that and while obviously five pages folded in half makes 20 which then makes 40 pages that wasn't enough for me so I wanted to fill it in with a little bit more so um, obviously my pages are pretty busy even though a couple of them have lines for writing so I thought okay well I'm trying to make this look older and vintagey and yet I need more room for writing so I decided to go ahead and stick in some coffee dyed papers so I went ahead and I put a piece of coffee dyed paper in between each one of the digital prints so that's two three here's number four and then there's our center and then I'm like, well, I want some different pages in there too. So I started digging through my Christmas tote and I found this little vintage book page from a kid's book that was part of Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I thought, oh, well, that'd be really cute in there. And if I fold it in half, you can read what's on this side. And you can also read what's on that side. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to stick that in there. And then I got here and I found this paper. And this paper is folded in half. I might go back and cut this. Um, I'm not sure yet. I might leave it like it is and kind of use it as a tuck spot. I'm not 100% sure yet what I want to do. So then this I left blank. Here's just a little um, candy stripe bag that's Christmassy. And I thought, well, this has a little bit of the blue in it, so let's bring in a little bit of blue. It's not the same color blue, but I think it goes all right. And then here I thought these colors matched this page pretty well this is just an old Christmas greeting card and then there we are at the middle I'll just flip and show you the other side real quick so there's the back side of the card so obviously we'll cover that here's the other side of the bag, the other side of that paper, here's the other side of the book page, and then there we are. So my goal today is to get this sewn into here. I think it's going to be a nice size signature 
for that. That's what it looks like. Oh, right there. So that's what it looks like. Um, so I think it's going to be a nice size signature for it. So to do this, what I want to do is pick out my thread, which it doesn't really matter which thread I use. Let's use one that's open already because more than likely I'm going to be putting something over the spine to cover it. And then we're going to need a needle. So let me get that out. Oh, that's a little bit of a thicker one. Let's try a Let's go with this one as I spill needles everywhere. Okay. And then I have my little Reader's Digest book here that I just poke holes into. So I have my needle and my thread ready to go. I have this and this ready to go. Um, how do I want to go about doing this? Because we have to make a template. So I'm going to first take this and I'm going to make sure everything's lined up, looks decent. I'm going to make sure it's all nice and snug. And then I'm going to clip it. And I want to clip it on this end and then I'm going to do the opposite side. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but you do want to make sure you clip opposite sides. Okay. And the whole time you're holding this, making sure that that is nice and tight down in the spine so that they're all pushed together there, okay? So what I want to do now is get my Tim Holtz ruler. And we're going to see how tall this is. So I want to go from the stitching to the stitching because I know that's about the, the width of my file folder. My file folder just goes out a tad bit more than the stitching on each side. So I'm going to go from stitching to stitching. I'm going to find the center of that. So that's at about four and a quarter. That's a little over. About right there is the center of my book. So I'm going to get my pencil because I want to be able to erase this. I'm going to put a line right there indicating that that's the center. So now we want to find the center of the spine. And the center of the spine is about right there. So if we take this and we go this way, we'll go an inch from the end and then we'll go an inch from this end okay so now I need my awl and we're going to just poke the holes Right, there's one. There's one. 
And there's one. So I'm just going to go through and make these a little bigger. Okay. So now I'm going to put this in here. And this isn't the most perfect way to do this. It's just how I'm choosing to do it today. So... If you like my method, then try it. If it works for you, that's awesome. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. So I'm going to try and get this as centered as possible. So right here. I'm just eyeballing in hopes that I'll get it right. I did not get it right. There. Okay. Again, just eyeballing. I know that that's too low where I was at, so I'll go right there. That's good. Okay. Again, just eyeballing. That's a little low. Okay. Now, when you're sewing in your signature, you want the height of your signature times three and a little extra. And that's usually way more than enough. So I'm just going to snip that. And I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. So to do a three hole pamphlet stitch, I am going to start on the outside because I don't want my knot to be seen. And I know I'm covering the outside anyway. So we're going to go through the cover and then line up our signature and go straight through the signature up through the middle pull it but don't pull it all the way through you want to leave yourself a tail I'm gonna to come to the top here and I'm going to go through the signature and the cover I'm just gonna work that and here we're caught so make sure you can pull it all the way through. Don't pull your tail through. So now I'm going to go through the cover at the bottom. Okay. Through the signature. Awesome. And now we got to go back through our middle here again. So you're going to go through that same space without catching your string so you're going to go through and then through the back and then you're going to give that a tug you can get rid of your needle now put that in there so it doesn't get lost I'm going to thread one of these underneath that middle space so that we can make sure everything stays in place. You're going to give it a good tug. You're going to want to double check and just make sure everything's in there firmly in place. Then you're going to 
go over and under, tie a knot, and then you're going to switch, and then you're going to go under and over to make a square knot. Pull it nice and tight, and then I'm going to cut my extras off. Leaving just a bit on there. Okay, so it's as easy as that. And our signature is now sewn into our cover. Put those away. Put your all away so you don't poke yourself with it. We're going to put our thread away because we're done with that. I'm also going to put my pokey book away. Okay. So now this is what we have. We have our journal cover and our journaling pages sewn in. So now what we can do is we can either focus on the cover or the inside. Now I wanted to put this over the front like so and then wrap this around the back like that. So we would have that there and then it would wrap around the spine and come across the front. But that covers all of the beautiful fabric. So I'm going to ask you guys that are watching my videos what your thoughts are on the red doily on the outside. If you think I should put it here or if you think I should just find some different lace to go down the edge or maybe some ribbon. Um, for example, I could take some of this that we used on this side and we could very easily put it over the spine and I could even, you know, put some there like so, so that it laps over a little bit more and then put another row of it on that side so then it laps over like that, but then it'll cover the horse's face. So I don't know, you guys let me know what you think I should do and I will hold off on doing that for now. So, since I'm going to hold off on doing that for now, let's go inside and play a little bit. So, there's one thing I always do for my journals that I really like doing, and that is putting a library pocket in the front. So, let me get a library pocket and a card. And let me get some red ink. We will use festive berries. Oops, I'm losing lids over here to other inks. Okay. So I need to get myself an ink dauber. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is ink around this. And again, I'm using Festive Varies. It is the Distress Oxide by Tim Holtz or by Ranger. Okay, now let's ink around this.
I'm just going to stick my fingers in here and pull that up and then ink there. Okie doke. So what I normally do now is use the paper that I'm working with to cover this and then sometimes I'll put it along the top of here. But I'm not using a particular paper pad. I'm just going to set this aside for the moment. So I'm going to, I have this huge box right here, this huge box here full of my Christmas stuff. So I am just going to have a dig in it real quick and see if I can find a Christmas paper pad that we might like to use. Because I know I have a few Christmas pads in here. Okay, so I have this one that is the Paper Studio um, Pine Street Square, and then I also have Paper Studio Old World Winter, and I have Plaid Tidings. So, let's see here. Maybe we just want to do some plaid. That's fun. And that matches, you know, the, the ribbon on the outside here. And it matches the buttons and the green and the red in it. So I think I'm going to use this to decorate that with. And then I have this little piece of music. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little plate here. And that just keeps me from losing the top to my glue. I'm going to glue along here. Okay. And I'm just going to place this paper on here. And I am going to go edge to edge with it. Sorry if my head's getting in the way. Okay. Now I'm going to take my scissors and just trim this out. that piece to the side because I want to use this here okay so I'm just going to line that up like so and then use my pencil to mark right there and then I'll give it a quick trim And then I'll give a quick trim this direction as well. So this piece right here is the piece we want. And then we're going to use, I use this little thumb or corner rounder. I'm going to use the medium side. And I'm just going to do the top two.
And then if you line this up in here, it lines up like perfect with the size of that. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of here, working kind of quickly so that this doesn't dry up on us. And then we're going to place it inside, working quickly, and there we have that. So obviously I covered up most of the inking, so I'll just ink around it real quick again. Sure you ink around the top. And then here we have our little card. But I think I want to. Should I put the music up there or should I put a piece of this up there? I think I sh I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put the plaid up there. And what I'm going to do is just put glue here on the area where I want it. And then line it up. Give it a good little press and smush, and then I'm just going to trim that out. Okay, for an extra little added something something, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine real quick and sew around it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I took this to my sewing machine and I just did a zigzag stitch around it and now it is ready to go in its pocket and I'm going to decorate this up a little bit. Let's see what we have in here. I see we've got some Christmas words. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. I think that's kind of cute to be on the front. And let's see if we can find... Oh, isn't that cute? Put him there like that with that saying. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do, and I want to put something behind him. I'm going to use some of this green cheesecloth. Put this back in here. Okay, now let's ink around this piece. And I'm thinking maybe we should do some book page behind there. I have this German book page. I just want to tear a little bit and put that down like so. So 
So I'm obviously not going to do all of the ephemera on camera because we've only got, you know, like two more videos left of this series. And I don't think I could get all the ephemera done for this in those two videos. So um, I will probably work on some of the ephemera by myself. But I will show you guys what I do when I come back. I ain't going to keep it all secret from you. Okay, so I like that. And for this, I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac because we're gluing, you know, the cheesecloth down. So, we'll just put the cheesecloth on there. Okay. Put our little saying on here like so and then I'll put our little boy on here I wanted to make sure I got the cap right back on that because it's trying to volcano on me so I'm just going to place this little boy just like so, so you can still read the words. Isn't that cute? Okay. So, there's our little library pocket for the front of our book. I think it turned out super cute. So now... We're going to open up our book, and this is going to go right here. And yes, I know it covers part of that. Let me just kind of slide y'all over a little bit. Try to anyway. Hold on. Don't get sick. I could have paused and done this, but you know. Who wants to do that? I just want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Let's slide this over here maybe. And then we can bring our book. There we go. Okay. So this is going to go right here. And yeah, it's going to cover up this little scene. But I'm okay with that. Because that's just too cute. So I'm going to pull out my card so I don't accidentally glue on it. And I am gluing to fabric, so I'm going to use my fabric tack. Just going to go around this, put some in the middle so it doesn't buckle. All right. And then. Try and get it down there nice and straight. So cute. Don't you just love it when you amaze yourself that, you know, it's just, it's such a simple little piece, but yet it adds so much. And it's just so cute. Okay. So then we got that there. So now when whoever gets this, they can put in here author, title, whatever, um, whatever they want to name their book and, you know, all that fun stuff. So cute. Okay. So now let's go to our first page here. And I think I want a pocket here. So let's look at our pockets that we have. Okay, we have those and then we've got 
Where's the other? I've got some corner pockets too. This one's a really cute pocket. So we could stick this guy here. Stick in more over like this. Or we could flip this over and put this guy here, but that's the same as that, so maybe we should use this one. Okay, I'm going to go sew around this real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I've just done a zigzag stitch around here, and now I'm going to go back and ink so that if any of the white of the paper is showing, it covers it. And I'm going to use my glue here and we're just going to glue along the side the bottom and then the other side and I am leaving my threads I want them to be seen and we're just going to tuck this right here So, while I'm working on the ephemera from this, I hope everyone is happy and healthy and doing well. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day today. It is Thursday. I don't know if I'm going to upload this today or wait a few days or what. And this is not wanting to glue down. Um, but anyway, today's Thursday. My sister-in-law's here and my husband and they decided to go down and visit their mom for a little bit so i decided to take advantage of the quiet house and record the video i love when my sister-in-law comes to visit you know it gives me somebody to talk to and socialize with and show my my fun creations to okay now that we have a pocket we need something to go in our pocket and i'll probably put a little label or something over here but isn't this santa just adorable okay so if we're going to use a tag i didn't print on the back so i'm going to use this coffee dyed paper and i'm just going to glue him on here and I think I'm just going to use glue stick because I'm then going to take it to the sewing machine and sew around it. So it doesn't have to be perfectly to the edges or anything, just, you know, make sure you get a good amount of glue on there. So, again, I did not mention this at the beginning of this video. Shame on me. This is a collaboration. This is Christmas in July 2022. And it is a collaboration of like 20 different YouTube artists that um, are coming together. Two of us, myself included, have graciously given our kits. For this that they could choose one of our kits to use um, to create their project with and this is all being done in the Facebook group sweet pea papers now you can find a link to the two people that um, have given up their kits for this in the description box down below you can also find all of the YouTube participants that are participating in this and posting videos of their Christmas and July projects. You can also find a link to the Facebook group Sweet Pea Papers ran by Terry. So, all the descriptions down there for you. Okay. 
So I have the tag covered, and now I'm going to go to my machine, and I'm just going to stitch around it. Okay, and here we are all stitched around. I'm again going to ink my edges real quick. Just making sure none of the white of the paper is showing. Okay, I'm going to take my corner rounder and I'm just going to round these corners. Go over that again with the ink. Okay, now I'm going to take my Big Bite. And we're going to punch a hole and then we're gonna grab the hole reinforcements let's do this on a scrap piece of paper here Just colored a couple of those red and we'll stick these stickers right on here like so do one on the back okay and now we need to come up with some thread or something some ribbon This is just peeking out of the box over here, so we might as well use it, right? Okay, fold it in half. Gonna poke it through this direction and then we're going to pull up the loop tuck these through the loop and gently pull I find if you pull from here up and then you pull your your little tabs up that it works a little bit better okay so this is really cute I'm liking it but I want to take one of these. They're the metal rimmed tags. These are 1.5 inch, so they're a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to need my hole punch. I'm going to need um, some chain, a little bit of chain, and a jump ring probably two jump rings and a um, bullpen. So I'm going to grab those things really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So I went ahead and cut my circles already. I used a one and three eighths punch and as you can see, that fits in there pretty darn good. So I'm going to start by getting a little extra ink on my pad and I'm just going to ink around the edge of this and then I cut two of them, one for each side and then I'm just going to take this and just go in around the edges. This doesn't have to be perfect here because it's going to be covered. I'll do it on this side as well. Just something because a little bit of white does show through. So if you're okay with that, then be okay with that. If you're not, then you can just do what I did. Okay, 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to glue our circles on. And I have quite the mess going on on my desk, I apologize. We'll just play the scoochy scooch game. Okay, so I am just going to put glue on here and pop it down in the circle. I don't have a directional type of paper, so I'm not going to worry. But I am going to try and center it as best I can. You're going to need your crocodile again for this, and you're going to want to use the smaller hole punch, and then just go in and repunch that hole. Then you're going to glue on your second piece. Again, it doesn't matter which direction it's going. Okay, then you're going to punch the hole again. So now we have this. Okay, now we're going to get a large jump ring. We're going to feed it through here. Okay, and you want to leave it open for right now. I'm going to take my chain here and I'm going to cut me off, oh, maybe five links. So on link number six, we're going to snip that. Okay, put our chain back in here. We're going to go back to our jump ring and stick one end of that on there. Oops, I hooked it in the middle, not the end. Do as I say, not as I show. Okay, so now we're going to close up this jump ring. And this jump ring is a little small. I don't think that's my big one. No, it's not. Okay. Reverse, rewind, do over. Okay, so we're gonna take the big jump ring. I have no idea what size it is. I just know it's my big jump ring. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take this other jump ring and put it on this end. Okay, so now we have that. Let's put this stuff away. Okay, sorry about that interruption of the dogs. The husband came home. But anyway, we're going to finish off this tag and finish off the pocket and then call it a video for today. So for the tag, I cleaned up my mess while I was gone too. Um, we're now going to take a jump ring, or not a jump ring, a bulb pen here. I've got these metallic green ones that I thought would be cute. And we're going to put it through this top jump ring that we put on and then put it through the ribbon on the top of our tag. That gives us a cute little dangle on there and you can tie some thread on here or something if you want to. Let's see if we have something small we can put on there. Maybe we got a real small word or something. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, just trim that down. I'm going to use some tweezers to hold this. And then I'm just going to put it in here and snip the corners. Okay, let's do the other two. That wasn't a very successful corner snip. But we'll fix it. There we go. Okay, so we're going to ink around that. And then I want to put some more of that cheesecloth underneath there. So we'll cut ourselves a little piece of this cheesecloth. We'll stick that on there just like so. Use some of the Fabri-Tac. just place this down like that clean up our glue mess we made so now we have this cute tag to go in our pocket and as I was looking for some stuff to decorate this I found this tag as well that I thought we could just ink and stick in the pocket So again, I'm just going to use the big bite here to punch a little hole. And then that can just poke out right there. Now I did find this word and I'm going to round the corners of it. And then we need to ink this. I think I'm going to put some book page underneath of it. Ink around that as well to make it pop in the background. cloth. Everything is about layers. Layers, layers, layers. The more you do sometimes the better it looks. Plain and simple is good sometimes as well but we always like our layers. So that's those presents. So let's look in here and see if one of these little picture, Christmas picture things I have might have some presents or something in it. It's a mailbox. Mailboxes bring presents, right? Here's a little box with some deer popping out of it. That's cute. Okay, I kind of like that. So let's go ahead and glue this down. I'm just using the Fairly art glue. I don't 
find much difference in the Barely Art glue um, compared to the Art Glitter glue. I think they're pretty close to the same thing. Um, the only difference I see is with the Barely Art glue, you have a few more seconds to work with it than with Art Glitter glue. With the Art Glitter glue, once you put it down to paper, it's, it's done. Um, and then the the barely glue I think comes out just a teeny weeny bit quicker okay so let's glue down our little present with the deer in it And then we'll glue down our word. And there we have our pocket and our tags. So okay so today we sewed in our signature and I went over how I chose my pages and we put this little library pocket in the front and then we made our first pocket with our tags and our little cluster here on the front so like I said there's no way I can do all of the ephemera for this journal um, on camera for you guys so I will be working on this off camera and next time we come on I'll show you what I've accomplished we'll work on a few more ephemera pieces for it and um, then the third video we'll do the same thing we'll do a few more or for the fourth video we'll do the same thing we'll do a few more ephemera pieces and then the final flip through of the journal so again, all the information is down in the description box below where you can find all the 20 other people that are doing this collaboration. And you can also find Sweet Bee Papers down below as well on Facebook. So if you haven't already, go on over and check out her group. Um, it's a really cool group. Lots of people over there sharing cool ideas and stuff. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.